All right. You feel connected to technology? Think your smartphone is an extension of your body? Let me tell you a shocking secret that's in your DNA, but most people don't even imagine. The true father of technology, the guy who started everything, was already walking around two million years ago. He was small, kind of brutish, but he invented the whole damn thing. Homo habilis. He was the one who picked up a rock and said, I'm going to turn this into a tool and I'm going to change the world. He's your direct ancestor who pulled us out of tree dwelling life and put us on the path of intelligence, of innovation, the first of us. But what if I told you that after doing all that, after being the inventor of everything, the main player who unlocked the future, this species simply vanished, disappeared. How the hell did the handyman, the father of our own technology, go extinct? What happened to Homo habilis, the father of technology and the first of our lineage? His story is a plot twist that science is still trying to decipher. And it's gonna blow your mind, I promise you. By the way, if you want to gain access to the most epic and mysterious stories of human evolution, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to Extinct Doc because what I'm about to show you today will make you question everything you think about intelligence, survival, and the end of the evolutionary line. We're going to show you that the strongest or smartest doesn't always take home the trophy in the end. You good? Let's do this. To start, we need to check out this legendary player, our true technological grandparent. Homo habilis emerged in East Africa, roughly 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago, right at the beginning of the Pleistocene, a time of intense climate fluctuations. He was the first of our lineage, the genus Homo. Before him, we had Australopithecines, like the famous Lucy, who walked on two legs, but were still more ape-like, with smaller brains and focused on plant-based diets. Hobilis is our official start, the point where we began to radically change. Primitive Genius's spec sheet. Size. Dude, he was small, like only about 4 foot 3, 1.30 meters tall, no taller than a modern child. He weighed around 65 to 90 pounds, 30 to 40 kilos. Think of a prehistoric buff dwarf, a physical underdog. Brain. Here's the first big breakthrough that changed the game. His brain was noticeably larger than Lucy's, like a jump to about 600 to 700 cubic centimeters, an increase of almost 50% compared to his closest ancestors. Still small by our standards today, but it was a gigantic upgrade for the time. Body. He had shorter legs and long arms, which shows he still spent time in the trees, maybe to escape giant predators or to grab some fruit and feel safe at night. It was a transitional body, kind of a two-in-one model. The Great Invention, the Primordial Hack. Along with his fossils, at sites like the famous Old Divide Gorge in Tanzania, the legendary couple Lewis and Mary Leakey, who were like the Indiana Joneses of paleoanthropology, found the key to everything, the first stone tools, the old Dewaran industry. This changed the game forever. Homo habilis was the first to look at a rock and say, this isn't just a rock, this can be a weapon, or a fork, or a scalpel. He didn't just use found rocks, he smashed the rock in a specific, intentional way to create a sharp blade. Think about the intelligence, the planning, and the coordination required for that. It's no accident we call him the handyman. He was the father of technology, the first to understand that intelligence could compensate for brute force. And with that, he was the first to open up a new menu, a menu that would feed an even bigger brain. With those Old Duan tools in hand, Homo habilis didn't become the T-Rex of the savannah. No. He became prehistory chef, but a very clever chef. These simple stone blades, sharp as a razor, allowed him to cut meat and break open bones from animal carcasses that other predators like saber-toothed cats or hyenas abandoned. We weren't hunter-gatherer pros yet. We were gourmet scavengers, but with a technological advantage. The secret menu that supercharged the brain. Meat. Not just any meat. It was a source of high-quality protein and energy, essential to sustain an active body. Bone marrow. 
found in broken bones. It was pure fat, super caloric. Think of a prehistoric energy drink. Brain, also rich in essential fats and nutrients, like omega-3s. It was a superfood that fueled cognitive development. This richer diet of meat and fat was a huge buff to our brains. More energy, more nutrients, bigger, smarter brains. We didn't get smart to make tools. We made tools to eat better and get smart. It's a vicious evolutionary cycle, a spiral of upgrades that pushed us forward. But life on the savanna wasn't just feasts and updates. It was constant danger. Homo habilis was small, fragile, and the Rift Valley in Africa was a merciless battlefield full of hardcore predators. Lions, leopards, giant hyenas, pakikruta, saber-toothed cats, megantirion, and even those giant human hunting crocodiles, Croctolicus anthropophagus. We were part of their food chain. We were, yes, prey. And the worst part, we needed water. And the banks of the rivers and lakes were the death zone, the hunting territory of these monster crocodiles and other predators. Every day we had to risk our lives to drink. It was constant stress, an evolutionary pressure that forced us to be smarter, to cooperate, or to become a snack. This constant pressure and fear profoundly shaped us. People thought only a big brain made us smart, but hunting and tools came first. What did you find crazier? Us eating brains to get smart? Or having to risk our lives every day at the river's edge full of crocodiles? Drop your opinion in the comments. In the same period as Homo habilis, the Rift Valley wasn't just ours, no. It was a true battle royale of hominins, a testing ground where evolution pitted several species against each other. We had tough competition. The most famous cousins were Paranthropus boise, nicknamed the Nutcracker Man. Imagine a gorilla with giant teeth and a thick head built for chewing tough plants and fibrous vegetation. Nutcracker Man's spec sheet, the competitor. Turbocharged gorilla head, a skull with a prominent bony crest on top, like a giant bony mohawk which served as an anchor point for gigantic chewing muscles. This was for crushing. Stone-crushing teeth, enormous molars and premolars with thick enamel, and a super robust jaw. They ate nuts, seeds, roots, and very tough savanna plants, like a biological grinder. Small brain. The brain was almost the same size as habilis's, about 500 to 550 cubic centimeters. But the evolutionary strategy was different. They invested in chewing strength and dietary specialization, not in intelligence to create. So you had Homo habilis, small, smarter, with tools, but without the strong body. And Paranthropus boise, a giant chewer, strong, but less clever when it came to innovating. They competed for the same resources, the same territories, and even the same water sources. They shared the same ecosystem, which led to constant, direct competition. Archaeological evidence, like that found by the Leakies at Ulduvai Gorge, shows that Habilis and Paranthropus coexisted for hundreds of thousands of years. They were like on the same server, playing the same survival game. But Habilis, with his more flexible diet and intelligence to create, had an advantage. While Paranthropus was a tough food specialist, which was good, but severely limited his options, Habilis ate everything, meat, vegetables, fruits. This flexibility was the key. When the climate changed and tough plants disappeared, Paranthropus was screwed. Us, we adapted, changed the menu, and used our brains. Homo Habilis was the inventor of technology the first of our lineage, the original rock star, and he reigned for almost a million years. That's an absurd amount of time. But around 1.4 million years ago, this species simply vanished, disappeared from the fossil record. And the most intriguing part, he wasn't replaced by another top-tier Homo habilis lineage. He was replaced by his direct successor, Homo erectus. What happened? 
Why did the father of technology, the guy who started us in the game of intelligence, go extinct? Science is still scratching its head with this plot twist, and there are several theories, each trying to piece together the ancient puzzle. Extreme climate change and adaptation. The Pleistocene continued its climatic carousel. Wet periods gave way to drier phases and more open seasonal environments. This drastically impacted food availability and habitats. Homo habilis was more versatile than Paranthropus, but not as versatile and biologically adapted for long-distance running as his successor, Homo erectus. Erectus had a runner's body, which was a huge advantage. The climate fluctuations were so drastic and rapid that perhaps Habilis's capacity for biological and technological adaptation was simply overwhelmed by the changes. They were good, but the planet became hardcore beyond their limits, and they couldn't keep up. Competition with newer, advanced species. As Homo habilis evolved and spread, he encountered and was encountered by newer hominin species like Homo erectus himself, who was on the rise. Erectus was larger, stronger, had an even more developed brain, around 900 cubic centimeters, and, crucially, mastered fire, which was a cheat code for survival. These newer species might have had more efficient Etchulian tools, like bifacial hand axes, more efficient hunting strategies, and more efficient social organization, outcompeting Habilis for resources and territory. Evolution, my friend, doesn't accept a tie. It's a game of best or go home. Theory of fusion or genetic dilution. Another possibility is that they didn't completely disappear through death or exclusion, but were assimilated by the new lineages. Many scientists, like paleoanthropologist Bernard Wood, suggest that the transition from one species to another can be less of an end and more of a beginning. As newer Homo species, mainly Erectus, spread and encountered Homo habilis populations, interbreeding may have occurred. This interbreeding diluted the Homo habilis DNA over generations until his identity as a separate species was lost within the gene pool of the descendant species. They became part of the new, like a gradual upgrade that swallowed the previous version. The truth is, it was likely a combination of factors. Homo habilis was a titan of evolution, a true trailblazer, and the first to break the technological barrier. But life in prehistory is unforgiving. Even the greatest pioneers can be surpassed by time and evolution, or simply absorbed by the next big thing. His story is a reminder that yesterday's success doesn't guarantee tomorrow's victory. Homo habilis was the inventor, but he lost the game to those who came after him. In your opinion, which factor was the most decisive for the end of this incredible species? The enracing climate? Competition with newer, smarter species? Or a possible fusion with the newcomers? Drop your thoughts in the comments. So Homo habilis wasn't just a hominin. He was the true father of technology, the primitive genius who took the first step on the journey of intelligence and innovation. He showed us that even small and fragile, we can change the world. His extinction wasn't a failure. It was the necessary level up for our own existence, the step we climbed to become who we are today. His story is proof that evolution is a game of constant transformations. And if you want to gain more access to these plot twists of human evolution and to the most brutal and ingenious stories of prehistory, you know what to do. Subscribe to Extinct Doc and hit the bell because our story is far from completely told and we don't want you to miss anything. Leave a like if this trip to the past made you see evolution in a totally new way. And share this video with that friend of yours who thinks technology is just new cell phones. Show them who the real inventors were. Thanks for hanging with us. See you next time.